Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Again, this is a quick recap in embryology. Uh, so the detailed version, you can go and watch my channel. So today we will be dealing with uh, respiratory system. Let's begin. Uh, we know that the respiratory system, it is actually developed from the foregut as a diverticulum. So you have the respiratory diverticulum developing from the foregut. Then you have the tracheoesophageal ridge. Now, the mucous membrane is actually derived from the foregut endoderm, whereas the musculature, the cartilage and the fibroareolar stroma, they are actually derived from the splanchnic mesoderm. Now, when we discuss about the maturation of the lung, you can discuss it under two main headings, the pseudoglandular stage, canalicular stage. So, this is actually happening in the first 26 weeks, pseudoglandular stage from 6 to 16 weeks and canalicular stage occurs from 16 to 26 weeks. After that, you have the terminal sac stage which extends up to birth that is from 26 weeks to birth and this is when you get the blood air barrier established and the final stage is the alveolar stage which will extend even beyond birth that is up to 8 years. So the main maturation is actually uh, occurring even after birth that is up to 8 years. So the first two stages pseudoglandular stage and canalicular stage that is during the uh, time before the viability that is up to 26 weeks these two main stages happen. Then the next two stages occurs up to birth and even beyond birth. So the alveolar stage, it is the time when you have the production of surfactants by the type 2 pneumocytes and this ensures the fetal lung maturity. And hence, uh, since it occurs during the seventh month, uh, it is this period is actually known as the viable age of the fetus. Now the lung fibroblast secretes the fibroblast pneumocyte factor, FPP, which stimulates the type 2 pneumocytes. And the role of cortisol or hydrocortisone is if it is given to the preterm babies, this will release the fibroblast pneumocyte factor which will accelerate the lung maturity. That is the idea behind giving uh, steroid injections before birth if it is a case of preterm delivery. Now, which is the first stage in the lung maturation process? That is the pseudoglandular stage. Appearance of the surfactants which ensures fetal lung maturity is during the alveolar stage. Cortisol given to preterm babies act as releasing fibroblast pneumocyte factor. Now, uh, a condition known as bacterial, that is a collection of defects, uh, but the cause is usually unknown. The defects are B4 vertebral anomalies, A4 anal atresia, C4 cardiac defects, T4 tracheoesophageal fistula, E4 esophageal atresia, R4 renal anomalies and L4 limb defects. So a collection of these defects, uh, you, you frame it as bacterial. Then um, the next condition is known as hyaline membrane disease or respiratory distress syndrome. It is usually seen in premature infants because there will be a deficiency of surfactant. So as a result what happens is waxy layers of hyaline membrane will line the collapsed alveoli of the lung and thereby what happens is there won't be any gas exchange. Now uh, let's discuss about some of the abnormal lobes of the lung. Uh, so as I goes lobe means there are supernumerary lobes seen in the lungs. In addition to the two or three lobes you will get more number of lobes. Now there is a condition known as lobe of SIGOS vein. Here what happens is as the SIGOS vein arches over the lung, it will separate a part of the lung from the main lobe. That portion is known as lobe of SIGOS vein. Then ectopic lung lobes, they are the respiratory buds which arise from the trachea and esophagus and they won't be seen in vicinity of the lung but other than the vicinity of the lung you will get uh, the buds which are developing as ectopic lung lobes. Then the tracheal lobe is actually that part of the lung which is aerated by a bud or a diverticulum arising directly from the trachea. That lobe is known as tracheal lobe. Now let's try to solve this which is not a component of bacterial. So it is liver anomalies. So L stands for limb anomalies and not liver anomalies. Now uh, this diagram it will be uh, easy for you to uh, name the different types of tracheoesophageal fistula. 
the first one we can see that the proximal end of the esophagus is blind whereas the distal end of esophagus is communicating with the trachea in this condition you can see the proximal and distal end of the esophagus they are completely blind so there is no fistula and there is no communication the this type here you can see that the esophagus is patent with a communication with the trachea in this type you can see the proximal type is making a communication whereas the distal end is blind in this condition you can see that the proximal and distal uh, part of the esophagus they are uh, making a separate communication and there is no continuity in the esophagus so these are the different types of tracheoesophageal fistula i have done a detailed version of the tracheoesophageal fistulas please go and watch um, so which is the commonest type so this is the commonest type that is the proximal end is blind and the distal end is making a communication uh, so that's about that's about uh, the development of respiratory system in a nutshell uh, thanks for watching.